So I did not think this day would come where I talked about not only the Rurock Atlas 4.0, but the brand ever again. I recently took this out for a ride just to revisit the idea of whether or not it really was a good helmet. So I decided to make a follow-up Friday episode for this uh, based on things that have changed with the brand. And I want to make sure that um, I've always said I want to be fair and that's what I'm coming to do. But it is certainly not without drama. So let's get to it. Follow up Friday. Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So as I said, I recently took this out for an hour ride up north. On the way back, I rode with the uh, Shoei R1400. So I wanted to put time back to back with both helmets. And I stand by the fact that I originally said this helmet, it's, it's a great helmet. I was blown away with the 4.0 after I put some hours on it. Maybe quality wise, still not quite up to showy standards, but comfort wise, I thought it was great. I still think it's great, but this was not without drama. I have paid attention to the comments on this Atlas 4.0 on my content. Reason being is that I have always said that if there are people who are having bad experiences with a product, they will come out of the woodwork and find your content to let you know that what they bought is garbage and that they're not happy. I haven't seen that with the Atlas 4.0. Now, the reason why I stopped riding with the Atlas 4.0, I made some comments about this helmet saying that it was a good helmet. It was not sponsored. It was independent of any sort of agreements. The company reached out and asked if they could use that in a direct to consumer marketing email campaign. And I said, absolutely not. That I didn't want to be associated with the brand because of the stink from their predecessor, Atlas 3.0. I thought that it would just hurt my credibility and ultimately, honestly, hurt the message that the helmet was good in and of itself because I felt like trust with the company was not at a very high. After a, a few days or a week had gone by, lo and behold, a direct-to-consumer email marketing campaign came out and paraphrasing essentially was that I had approved of this helmet in a review and I got very angry. So I made a video having to distance myself saying, hey, anybody who received that email, it could look suspect. Just want to make it very clear again, I am not affiliated with them. It somewhat put me on my heels a little bit and I wasn't a huge fan of that move. Well, when I put that video out, former leadership had asked me to remove the video. And I said, hey, look, I'll pull it down. I'll make it private for a day or so. Let me know what you really took objection to because I'm a reasonable person. About a day had gone by and I had asked, hey, what?" What was the part of that that you really objected to? Because honestly, it wasn't really a bad video. I just had to distance myself and protect my brand. And the response that I got was that uh, this individual had not watched the video. So I got very upset because I said, you basically judged a book by its cover. You read the title and thumbnail of the video, asked me to remove it, and then never took time to watch it and just expected that I would just take it down forever. And I put it back up immediately and said, we're done. Uh, and that was pretty much the end of it. Since then, leadership has changed at Rurock. I respect the company enough to kind of come back and say, I appreciate the people behind the creation of this Atlas 4.0 because it is such an incredible jump from the 3.0 to 4.0. It's hard to even explain. There's still some concerns about sizing and anybody who reads comments, size up. They're still potentially a little bit smaller than you might want. That's pretty much it. We're down to the point of subjectivity. One person might prefer this over a showy. Another person might prefer a showy over that. But what they've removed, in my honest opinion, is everybody's ability to grab the helmet, grab a cheek pad, and laugh. <laughs> that cheek pad is garbage. <laughs> That was kind of where the 3.0 was at. This liner, completely, completely different for the betterment of this experience. After riding with this thing on a little journey earlier this week, putting some miles back on it, it's a great helmet. It's all down to arguments now. People can argue until they're blue in the face about whether the new ECE rating is better than Snell or not. That's where I told former leadership they needed to get this helmet to, which was a position of no longer being able to just grab it and easily being able to say, this is junk. So I'm just coming back to say, yes, it is a good helmet. If you like the design of this, 
more so than like the traditional showy. I would still tell you, yes, buy this helmet. Uh, be aware that the return process and purchase process can be, from what I understand, a bit more of a pain. You're not buying it from a local brick and mortar. So with that comes some, some problems and potential return issues. And you really have to want this Ruroc to deal with some of that. And if you're not honest with yourself going through that process, you might be setting yourself up for disappointment. I see a lot of people who order it and then they get upset that they have to wait for it, which is kind of absurd in my opinion. But aside from some of the order fulfillment stuff, it, it's a good helmet. Now, in these boxes, I have yet to even open these. After I went to the press release of the Atlas 4.0, they told me that they would send me out these cut in half helmets. Now these helmets already have was an incredibly bold move for them to just call my bluff and send them out to me. The reason why I did not make content and these helmets sat in my closet for the better part of a year was I lost trust in the brand completely and I just didn't want to make content around it anymore. I didn't really care to promote a brand that was being careless with my brand. Was was That was my takeaway. But they shipped me out. This is an AGV Sports Modular, a Bell Race Star Flex, an Atlas 4.0, an Atlas 3.0, and this is a Shark Spirit S500. We have a Shoei NXR, which I believe is the exact same thing as the RF 1400. I think it's just ECE instead of Snell. It's for the European market. This is an AGV Pista. And here we have a Scorpion XO 1400. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine half helmets that Ruroc sent out to me. I could make a video showing you guys all of these differences of the helmets inside and out, but truth be told, I don't think it's necessary because as I'm looking at these helmets, and you guys can let me know in the comments down below if you want me to get more deep dive into this, but as I'm looking at these things, I mean, they're all just a slightly different take on some foam and some liner and a shell. So until you get into looking at the 3.0 and truly how bad that helmet was in terms of a liner, I mentioned this in my previous video that the Atlas 3.0, the shell was good, the, li or the, the foam EPS liner was good, but then when you got into the actual touch points of the foam, what actually feels good or bad on your face, it was very, very much lacking in that department. But now as Ruroc sent these helmets out, I, I come into it and I look, yeah, this one, I don't even know what this is. This is a bell. It's got a bunch of different EPS layers and, but which one's better? I don't know. Am I qualified to tell you? No, I'm just a guy who's looking at the construction of these things. And I see different approaches to similar ideas of protecting your dome. I'm not qualified to make that assessment per se, but ECE, Snell, that's what these guys exist for. So as long as the helmet meets that rating, well then that's where your baseline is. I don't really care what you put inside the helmet as long as it's got quality and all of the materials down below passes that rating and feels good on my head. That's where the 3.0 fell apart was it didn't feel good on my head because it felt cheap. And if I'm gonna ride for an entire day, I don't want something that's on my head that just feels like it's not worth the money I spent on it. And that's where things changed with the Atlas 4.0 was now I feel like it's right up there with Shoei. I haven't ridden with any of these other helmets, so I can't comment on those. And I think the 4.0 is, it's, it's playing in the same league of these competitors now. And I'm sure there's plenty of people who could argue back and forth about whether AGV is going to be better than Arai. And I'm sure there's forums out there where people go back and forth about these two. Looking at all these brands now, I just, I feel like Ruroc is in the same conversation now. So have the conversation. And I think it's worthy of, of having. And if you guys want me to get into more of a deep dive about comparing what some of these things look like cut in half, let me know in the comments down below. Or do you think it's worthy of just leaving it at, 
yeah, I, I, I think Rurock is there. Uh, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. See you guys next time.